Hello and welcome fellow film buffs. I'm Hunter Van Lierup and I'm joined by my co-host and fellow cinephile, Zach Droll. Hello, hello. Before we get started, we are the Box Office Losers. Each and every week we deep dive into the movie screen to watch and review any and all films to ever grace the movie screen or the TV screen. Zach, how have you been over the last week? Snyder Cut just came out and I got to I got a chance to watch it. God damn is that four hours I can never get back. <laughs> I in a am... good way. I I have not I've yet to watch it because I was waiting I, I was gonna wait until we had November. A, <laughs> I was gonna try my hardest to wait till November because because I, I want my first reactions to be genuine. When yeah, it comes that was to our it. original slate. We just recently changed it, literally five minutes ago, to where we're gonna cover it after Godzilla v Kong because we're still in the Godzilla yeah. marathon. And if and you um, Snyder cut stuff. And if you can tell, uh, we're probably like you. If you can't tell, we're recording this later in the day. That's why we. That's why I sound a bit more alive. I always sound the same, because I, I have energy always. Oh, I um, <laughs> I don't. I feel like I need to start drinking caffeine every morning to wake up. I actually drank caffeine right before I went to bed. <laughs> drank well, a whole bottle of Mountain Dew before I went to bed and was still able to sleep. Well, it did take me a little bit longer, but, you know, I process it weird because I've been doing it for so long. Yeah, I don't but, do energy drinks, though. But yeah, but my, my week's been good. Your week's been good, too, I, I assume. Yeah, if Snyder Cut, Star Wars, Godzilla, I've been doing a lot of that kind of stuff, and I've been on a Star Wars merchandise binge, where I've been buying a bunch of Star Wars merch because I'm getting back into the franchise. Yeah, well, um, I... Me and Courtney are doing a marathon, we're watching everything Star Wars, we're doing movies, TV shows, everything in chronological order, Oof. we're on the Clone Wars right now, we're like halfway through season one. Well, like, with, we with the, with the Clone Wars, you're gonna have to split it up, because some of it leads into the movies. Well, no, the Clone Wars TV show that came out in 2008... Has a timeline order that takes place right. Um, oh, we're doing chronological order as in timeline in the in canon stuff, not in release order. So we're doing. Um, we one, watched one well, and two. I, I, I and was bringing up how because my friends did the same thing. They they, they watched the, the Star Wars movies, and then um, I think ha- halfway through one season of Clone Wars, they stopped. Watched this movie. This movie stopped. And then went back in. Oh, they might be doing the uh, Genghi Tarkatsky show that came out in 2005. I think they might be splitting that up. Because that technically works in the plot, even though it's Legends content right now. But, um, you know, I'm doing the Clone Wars and I have that in the proper order. And then it's all the TV shows and it's, it's all the seasons. And then season seven, you have to split between Revenge of the Sith because things happen at the same time. Yeah. But we'll get to that when we get to that. If you want to hear me talk more Star Wars... Hashtag shameless plug. Go check out Farthest Galaxy uh, tomorrow. Oh, no. The day before, Thursday. We're talking about Solo. So, mm. yay. Oh, but, and also, because you mentioned what went on buying spree, I bought every single movie in the MCU. <laughs> hey, man. You gotta love the you gotta love it. That was like a couple hundred bucks right there. Oh, yeah, because each one's at least 20. 20 Not, or uh, Like, minimum. Yeah. So, without any further ado, this week we are talking about Godzilla King of the Monsters, which is the sequel to the 2014 Godzilla and the third movie in the legendary Monsterverse. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Did you I'm, like it better than the original, well, the 2014 one? I, I gave it a higher score than the first one that we saw. Oh, and funny how like, um, we, we started watching this, and guess what gets added to fucking HBO Max the day we start doing... Uh, well, the, the the day we record King of the Monsters. How Which about the 2014 Godzilla? Godzilla? Oh, got added? <laughs> yes. That's funny. Oh, it's because they're gearing up for everybody to do the marathon like we are. Do you, do you know how pissed I was? I spent $3 <laughs> on a rental from freaking Amazon. Hey, man, it is what it is. So you like, win some, you fuck? lose some. Yeah. Uh, so Godzilla, King of the Monsters, the 2019 monster film directed by Michael Doherty and co-written by Doherty and Zack Shields. It is the sequel, like I said, to the 2014 one. It is the 35th film in the Godzilla franchise and the third, like I said before, in the legendary MonsterVerse and the third Godzilla film to be produced by a Hollywood studio. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, um, I didn't know who was important, who was not important. So this cast list has everybody that was on screen. Uh, that's everybody important. Okay. Well, I think minus some of the soldiers, but that's about it. Eh, I mean, we have uh, Ice Cube Jr., so. Yeah. He was cool. He was fun in this movie. 
Yeah. So uh, do you want do you want me to do the list or do you got it? None of them look Italian, so you should be fine. Um, no, I have a feeling my brain will freaking d- destroy itself once like we hit other parts. So y- you got this, buddy. <laughs> okay, so we have Kyle Chandler as Dr. Mark Russell. He's the dad. Got Vera Farmiga as Dr. Emma Russell, who is ugh, she was terrible in this movie. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Um, not her as an actress or character. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown as Madison. Uh, she had no. She had nothing to do in this movie. Bradley Whitford as Dr. Rick Stanton. Sally Hawkins as Vivian Graham, R.I.P. Uh, Charles Dance as Alan Jonah, who's the British bad guy. Uh, Thomas Middleditch, for some reason, in this movie as Sam Coleman. Uh, Aisha Hins as Colonel Diane Foster. Ice Cube Jr. <laughs> as Jackson Barnes. Uh, David Straitharn, who comes back for two scenes as William Stenz. Ken Watanabe as Dr. Ishiro and Zhang Ziyi as Dr. Eileen Chen and Dr. Ling. I don't know why they're cast as two people, but it is what it is. Um, I, I want to talk about stuff, fucking Thomas being in the psych one. I, I associate with him being the fucking Verizon guy. I associate him with uh, Silicon Valley, which is why he got the job as the Verizon guy. <laughs> um, but th- there's a fun thing. The guy, uh, I guess that was Charles Dance, who plays the bad guy, right? Uh, no, it's not Charles Dance. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yes, um, it's Charles Dance. So, like, Jonah. he actually was in Game of Thrones. Nice. Is he, so, uh, G- not Gendry. Oh, my God. No, no, no. He was King Tywin. Drake's... Tywin Lannister. Yes. Yeah, he's I, in Lannister. Which is, like, so some of the, like, so it's, like, the long live the king shit. Mm-hmm. That's, like, kind of funny, in my opinion. <laughs> well, it's all that British bullshit as well. He was British Special Forces in the movie. But also, like, kind of, like, I, I, like, for me, like, only knowing him from... Oh, Game of Thrones, yeah. Game of Thrones, with that association is kind of kind of funny. Yeah, I recognize his face. I just couldn't put my finger on who it actually was. Oh, same. I, I had to look him up real quick. I'm like, is yeah. this? Okay, it, and, it was him. And I recognize Kyle Chandler. I just don't know what he's been in. I'm going to click on his Wikipedia page. He, I who think he's, is... he's been in, like, random action. and He's been in a movies. lot. Oh, he was Grey's Anatomy for a while. Yeah. And, oh my god, what was he in? Zero Dark Thirty, Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, Wolf um, of Wall Street, can't wait to Game Night. <laughs> Game Night's the one I was thinking of. And the original King Kong movie. Well, oh, t- 2005 King Kong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, he, he played, uh... He was a very supporting role, it said. Very small. Um, so this film, uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, had a budget of 170 to 200 million. Yeah, give or take marketing. And made about three hundred and eighty six point six million. Yowchies, bro. Yeah. If yeah, it if the budget was hundred and seventy, at least it doubled its budget. If it was marketing, I mean if it was two hundred <laughs> Well, remember this had multiple ads during the Super Bowl. That is true. So, so that's where some of the thirty million dollars came in. So like that's that's I mean it's rough. not even like it's a bad movie. It's just why did nobody go to well, see this movie? I, I guess I, people were upset with 2014 Godzilla. Yeah, I, I think it was probably because of the bad taste in the mouth type of, type association. Yeah, but we got Kong Skull Island and Kong Skull Island rocked socks. So. But, like, there's a difference. King Kong is... King Kong. King Kong's big monkey and, and a lot of big people monkey. like big monkey. Well, King Kong is more of a household name in the U.S. at least. Yeah. And also Godzilla, because, it's like only for actual fans of kaiju. You know who Godzilla well, is. Well, also outside of like the only other Godzilla film outside of 2014, which was the Matthew Broderick one. <laughs> we don't count that one. That's Zilla right there. We don't count that. No, freaking. we count that. <laughs> no, Ferris Bueller, go get freaking like the gold. eggs in Penn Station, dude. The <laughs> eggs in Penn Station. No, you need to stop. <laughs> what do you mean? The, the eggs in Penn Station? Come on. Nah, man. I've actually never seen that movie. I've seen bits and pieces of it. Oh, same. Same. <laughs> I, I I just know Matthew Broderick's in it, and the eggs are in Penn Station. That's all I know. The eggs are in Penn Station. Maybe we'll cover it at some point in the lo- in the in um on our show, but not for a bit. We're going to be godzilla it out for a while. Yes, we are... So. Uh, gonna be new, like almost like a new movie out until freaking Space Jam probably. Uh, Mortal Kombat, I think I have in May. Okay. Uh, when Space Jam come out? Do we know? I don't know, but I we did have we do have free spots in our um Penny slots that we can drops. put something in. Yeah, and we can always move Akira around. Not because that Akira is like oh we can push it back because it's Akira, but because like there's nothing crazy going on. So. Yeah. 
All yeah. right. So um, Gareth Edwards, the director of the 2014 Godzilla, stated that he wanted Godzilla to work as a standalone film with a definitive ending. And he opposed to, and he opposed suggestions that the ending should leave the film open for a sequel. He said that he had no problem coming back for a sequel if the <clears> film <throat> did well. Hmm. It did well. The the first Godzilla film did well for him. Uh, but the main concern was delivering a satisfying experience with the current film. Mm-hmm. I want a story. Um. Uh. Um, Edwards says. I want a story that begins that begins and ends, and you leave on a high note. Uh, that we all cared about, and we were and we were making this, uh, just this film. If we if this film is good, the others can come. But let's play. But let's pay attention to this and not get sidetracked by other things. He's basically uh, saying that he didn't want to uh, be bogged down by forcefully putting sequel bait in. Kind of like how uh, Sam Raimi was for Spider-Man 3. Yeah, he was like, sequel bait. Yeah, because sequel bait is honestly what killed the DCEU. Oh, and well, also, originally, like, and, originally. I, and I, I'm quoting uh, a YouTuber I watch who, like, he, he doesn't cover movies, but he he just randomly talks about them on stream. Mm-hmm. He goes, Josh Sweden, that fucking Marvel plant, he messed up <laughs> everything. He did it on purpose. <laughs> but uh, after a successful opening for uh, 103 million internationally, Legendary's um, MonsterVerse was greenlit, and the Godzilla sequel was put into play was put into fruition. Uh, with, with plans to produce a trilogy and Edwards attached to direct, at the San Diego Comic Con in July 2014, Legendary confirmed that they have acquired the rights to uh, Rodan, Mothra, and King Ghidorah. Uh, monsters and Toho. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, for two monsters. <laughs> a short teaser clip showing concept art of all three, uh, with the ending tagline "Let them fight," Let was them fight. shown. Nice. Other details of their appearances in the sequels were not announced. In August, all showed up in this one. <laughs> in August of 2014, Legendary announced that the sequel would be released on June 8th, 2018, and that Godzilla writer um, Matthew uh, Bornstein would Max return Bornstein. To, would return to write the screenplay. Also false. Yeah. When <laughs> we find out later that he is not the true. Um. So like, uh, but uh, uh, guys, as we always state, keep everything we say about notes of a grain of salt. Because it is from, uh, it is from Wikipedia. Well, no, I'm only saying false because this is stuff that was announced in 2014. Blah blah blah. It probably, It'll it probably go down the clarified. line. Our notes, yeah. But I'm saying false now, as and we know, as what happened right now. No, but I, but it's always just just an information that I like, keep everything. Yeah. W- w- that that we say with a grain of salt. We don't mm-hmm. see this as fact. So in April 2015, Aaron Taylor Johnson stated that he was unsure if he would reply, reprise his role for a sequel that, uh, and it would also depend on Edward's decision. In October 2015, Legendary planned to unite Godzilla and Kong in the Godzilla v. Kong movie and set for 2020, which we kind of almost got, but then COVID. Yeah. Um, Legendary is creating a shared cinematic universe centered around Monarch that brings together Godzilla and King Kong in an ecosystem of supergiant species, both classic and new, like the Mutos. Uh, while Legendary will maintain its home at Universal Pictures, it will continue to collaborate with Warner Brothers for the fran- for future franchises. In 2016, Warner Bros. announced that Godzilla 2 had been pushed back to June 8th, 2018, uh, from June 8th to March 22nd, 2019, which I think is the release date it actually came out in. And shortly afterwards, uh, Edwards had left to work on smaller scale projects, one of them being he had to finish up Rogue One, and then he was going to jump to his indie films again. Uh, he felt that he needed to get things, he needed to get on with things instead of waiting for him to finish Rogue One. Mm-hmm. So he basically said, hey, I got this thing to do. You need to go do your own thing. And Legendary was like, I then. Uh, in October of 2016, it was announced that Michael Doherty and Zach Shields, who worked together on Krampus, great movie, uh, would write the screenplay for Godzilla 2, not yet titled King of the Monsters. A day later, it was reported that Doherty was already in negotiations to direct. <clears throat> the same month, Legendary announced um, the parent company, uh, Queen Dao Movie Metropolis, uh, that worked with Pacific Monsters, will be helping with the... Um, CGI. That's cool. And then December, it was given the title of King of the Monsters. In 2017, Doherty was officially confirmed as the director, and he would help rewrite the script with Max, uh, Zach Shields. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, Doherty stated that he loved the 2014 slow build and that he would uh, take the gloves off for this film, not holding back. To be fair, there are a lot of monsters in this, so, you know, I'm into that. Yeah. Uh, there's like five or six monsters that are just like, here they are. Um, like, while comparing... I, I, all, all the monsters were dope here. I, I like them a lot. Yeah, I gotta rewatch some of the fight scenes. I think I missed some of the monster appearances. I was, I, I, I have was some doing my mid movie notes and I was bumping back and forth. So, um, I, I have a lot of funny notes again of Godzilla talking. Oh God! Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when comparing King of the Monsters uh, to the 2014 film, he said, "I would call my movie the Aliens to Garth's Alien, which means slow build in the first one, second one is going balls to the wall." Dirty elaborated by noting the balance between serious and fun with tongue and cheek moments. Um. And then Legendary's only mandate for the films was to include Monarch, Rodan, Mothra, and King Ghidorah. Uh, Doherty's script, they had to start over from scratch, apparently. Ooh. So, yeah, he just wanted to have Godzilla just fight some monsters, like, not having any names. And then uh, Legendary was like, well, you gotta use the monsters we have because we spent money on them. And he was like, fuck. So he had to restart everything. But that's when Zack Shields came on officially. This is like uh, in 2014 when they were like still working on what Doherty was trying to do. Uh, 2015, I mean. All right. Uh, where, where are we now? Uh, Doherty and Shields chose a human storyline. Uh, uh, okay, I saw now. Uh, Doherty and Shields chose a human storyline where the science fiction elements can be replaced with themes such as climate change or eco-terrorism and stand out on its own without the monsters. Uh, Doherty um, felt that the third act uh, proved um, that proved the most challenging in terms of writing as many humans and monsters story arcs come converging and needing to be resolved. Shields confirms that Emma's speech to Monarch went through several rewrites. Shield and Doherty wanted to uh, wanted the speech to present a moral question to the audience whether they would put their faith in humanity or Mother Nature. In the original script, Mark and Sam were originally written as old friends um, and then changed in later drafts from Sam to uh, Sirizawa to have, him be, to have him be the guiding force to Mark. Doherty added the Oxygen Destroyer as... Which is an insane thing. That is insane. An Oxygen <laughs> that, Destroyer missile. Can we talk about that? that's just hey here's funny here's funny weapon hopefully it works dude i was dude i was while i was watching that movie i don't know if i put it on my notes i haven't read them since this morning but like imagine being killed due to an oxygen destroyer you just bye bye lungs like <laughs> yeah, oh because, my like, god because what, it, it takes out someone within a two mile radius it said dude it eliminates all the oxygen within two miles yes <laughs> that is Unbelievable! Imagine, imagine <laughs> if you were on a boat just like scuba diving there. Oh, dead, <laughs> D- dead. <laughs> it's it's like those just memes fishing of, on a boat. All of a sudden, <gasps> gone. It's, it's like those memes where, where you see on TikTok where someone throws a rock over over the bridge and hits the fish. Yeah, it's just like I'm like, huh? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just gone. Oxygen uh, destroyers, but gone. an oxygen destroyer as a representation of humans' ability to not interfere. Yeah, Doherty and have to try to stop things. Uh, Doherty and Shield chose to have Godzilla killed during the film's midpoint, due to this being an idea that has not been done to previous Godzilla films. Shields uh, noted that this was also a parallel Godzilla and Mark's character, stating Kyle's loss to faith in being in go- the beginning, in the beginning, and finds it in the most. And if I'm finds it in this moment when he realizes, you know, God is dead. Yeah, that's crazy. It, it's a good scene where we see um, them just say, oh, he's still kicking. He's OK. And then all of a sudden it flat lines. And then Gosh, uh, yeah. Kyle's just like, fuck, it's uh, good. And Dory didn't show treatment in earlier drafts. Full sequences of the non-Toho Titans uh, rising after Giodora's call were written but later trimmed due to uh, budgetary concerns. Yeah, which it's was, like when um, that the was big monster call. standing up. Yeah, that was a good call. Yeah, budget too big. <laughs> uh, do you, you want to pick up? Yeah, the film reclassifies the monsters' designations from Mutos to Titans. Way more, way way more sense. Makes so much more sense. 
Um, for the monsters, Doherty wanted their designs to emit a godly presence and evoke a sense of worship in stating, Primitive man saw these creatures, Hollow Earth, and you want them to give a presence that would <laughs> drop him to his knees and bow to God. It can't just look like big dinosaurs. <laughs> Jurassic Park has that covered. They have to be distinct. They have to be their own thing. They are titans, which is a good way to describe how um, he did make these monsters look unbelievable. Oh, yeah. The director instructed the designers to look at the original designs from every era and distill those silhouettes and those key traits into something more modern. It was important for the director that the Titans were not just treated as monsters, but very large animals with a distinctive thought process. For Godzilla, Doherty wanted to put the god back in Godzilla, and he liked the design that Gareth Edwards and Matt Oslop, uh, Alsop conceived, but wanted to tweak it by adding dorsal plates from the 1954... Um, iteration as well as making the claws and feet a little bit bigger to make godzilla look more powerful because he technically aged only by five years but still and the director and the sound design team expanded godzilla's roar to make it sound closer to the 1954 incarnation stating he think he did a great job in the first movie but he wanted it to go a little bit further which is cool uh now we're talking about rodan for a little bit rodan um this is my favorite scene i'm sorry <laughs> oh when he, he pops out of the, the, yeah. the volcano and just kills I, everybody so I, I i didn't know his <laughs> name at first so i called him lava pterodactyl that's what he is that's exactly what he is uh rodan elements of volcanic rock were added to the scales and skin to make rodan look capable of living inside a volcano doherty wanted rodan's design to resemble something that mother nature could have created the designers were instructed to not make it look only like a pterodactyl, but also kind of like a vulture and an eagle and a hawk, but make it, you know, more dinosaur-esque. Um, he described Rodan as a bit of a rogue. You never know what he's going to do or his loyalty is going to lie. And uh, they described him as a massive atom bomb that brings speed and ferocity. Um, uh, for Mothra, he wanted to create a design that was something beautiful and feminine and elegant that looked like a true goddess, but all dangerous if she had to be. Um, they wanted to remain faithful to the color palette in the 1961 one and the eye spots, uh, for the wing, uh, on the wings. The eyes were redesigned to resemble Godzilla's eyes in order to create a connection between them for some reason. Mothra was designed to look like a real moth with longer legs. Pass, bro, pass. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, Doherty researched various moth species and discovered that some that looked scary and predatory, and he wished to maintain, uh, maintain a sense of realism for Mothra. Uh, stating that he wanted the approach for Mothra uh, to be a giant insect. He nailed it. And that's uh, believable from every angle and especially in motion, like when it's uh, crawling around in the base and shooting webs out of its mouth. Uh, the director found Mothra more difficult than the regular Titan design because they wished to avoid it looking like just a giant-ass moth. <laughs> and now for King Hikidura. Um, Doherty wanted to create a unique design f that still resembled King Ghidorah, which is just a giant three-headed dragon, and worked closely with Toho to make sure the new design respected past incarnations. Each head was given its own personality. That's where the meme comes from, with the center being the alpha and the other two being its lackeys. Yeah, he studied various animals, specifically King Cobras. Yeah, but the, the one on the right fucking was, like, horny as shit for no reason. <laughs> hey, man, it is what it is. Like, like it was, it, it was nose nuzzling people. It was licking a dead body. It is what it is, man. And then the other one's a big stupid idiot and keeps dying. Yeah. Uh, the designers were instructed to look at different scales from various reptiles to avoid having Ghidorah's scales look too similar to Godzilla and the original King Ghidorah. Uh, the director told the design team to maintain Eastern dragon influence for Ghidorah to, and to avoid any Western dragon influence. Stating they're not traditional Western dragons, so we're not uh, we're marching orders from the beginning. We don't want it to look like a Game of Thrones dragon. Fair. <laughs> uh, Legacy Effects also provided some of the stuff for Ghidorah, and he uh, likened Ghidorah to Rip Van Winkle in his, with a sense of curiosity and cruelty. Doherty then confirmed that he had um, original monsters that were non-Toho. The names of the non-Toho titans are Baphomet, Typhon, Abaddon, Bunyip, uh, Methesela. Behemoth, Scylla, Tiamat, Leviathan, Sargon, and Mokili Mumbebe. <laughs> Why you gotta say it like that? That's exactly how they wanted me to say it. Doherty created these new monsters uh, to, as a part of the Toho tradition to add monsters into the Godzilla pantheon with every movie, like with the Mutos. Um, originally, Doherty had hoped that Legendary would acquire more monsters like Anguirus, Biollante, and Gigan, but they did not. Hopefully they will be at the end credits for this movie, please God. And last, but certainly not least, let's jump to... Uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of stuff that got? I have to get about, like, uh, home release stuff that, like, merchandise. Yeah, we never need any of that stuff. 
I think that's really it. We just added it real quick. Uh, besides, uh, uh, let's jump to the principal photography. I'll see that. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, principal photography began on June 19th, 2017 in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia be- com- becoming like the new New York or Hollywood because that's where a lot of things are filmed. Mm-hmm. I learned this when I went there myself to see Walking Dead stuff. Nice. And every tour guide, uh, since like cons- it-, it took us to areas where scenes were filmed. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, and right now, uh, this Marvel movie is being filmed here. Well, it's because it's cheap. And that Marvel movie is being filmed here. So, like, Lost Georgia. Taxes. So, if you want to have a good chance of seeing filming going on, Atlanta, Georgia, or just Canada anywhere too. in Georgia is the best spot to go. Yeah. Um, Doherty confirmed that the film would feature uh, partial uh, partial effects. And, cre- and creature designs by Tom Woodruff Jr. Uh, Lawrence Shear um, had been confirmed as a director of photography. Parts of the film were shot in the historic central of Mexico City between August 19th and August 22nd of 2017. Doherty announced that the film had wrapped production on September 27th of 2017. That is not that bad. About three months of filming? Yeah, well, it's mostly CGI. True. Very true. You just got to do the motion capture stuff. That, that, that's still really good to wrap up that fast. Yeah, and real quick before we get to the plot, uh, there was a prequel graphic novel that came out called Godzilla Aftershock. It was released in May of 2019. It was written by Avrick Nelson and illustrated by Drew Edwards Johnson. It was just some extra kaiju stuff that kind of gave you the what was Godzilla doing in these five years besides just vibing in the ocean. So. I, um, d- didn't this movie come out just near Endgame as well? It came out, uh, I think, a month before Endgame. Oof. Or Infinity War. Endgame. No, Infinity War. Which one? Fucking Endgame. That's 2019. Uh, Endgame, yeah, because 2019. Yep. All right. Hop into the plot. Plot, plot, plot. Did you copy the basics? I don't see it. (laughs) I just just pulled up the Wikipedia page because, spoiler alert, that's what we do. So I'll just read it all off. Okay. Ahem. Five years after the existence of the Titans was revealed to the world, Dr. Emma Russell, a paleobiologist working on the Titan-studying organization uh, Monarch, and her daughter Madison witness a birth of a larva called Mothra. Emma calls it Mothra using uh, Emma calms Mothra using the Orca device that is supposed to you know work on whales so they don't come to the ocean. But they were like, "What if we use it on giant monsters?" And it worked. So whatever. Um, they used a frequency that to alter or attract the behavior. A group of eco terrorists led by British Army. Colonel Alan Jonah, British, brah, um, attacks the base and kidnaps Emma and Madison while Mothra flees and pupates under a nearby waterfall. Kind of looks like Niagara, but it ain't. Uh, monarch scientists Dr. Ishiro Shirazawa and Dr. Vivian Graham, RIP, approach former employee Dr. Mark Russell, Emma's ex-husband and Madison's father, to help track them down. Mark is reluctant at first due to his hatred towards Godzilla, whom he blames for the death of his son during the events of the San Francisco, um, I think the kid's name is Andrew, uh, during yes. San Francisco, but agrees eventually. The Monarch team follows Godzilla to Antarctica, where Jonah intends to free a three-headed titan codenamed Monster Zero. Emma frees and awakens Monster Zero, who battles Godzilla, devours Graham, R.I.P., and escapes. The team later deduces that Emma is working with the bioterrorists. Uh, from a Monarch bunker in Boston, Emma contacts Monarch and argues, uh, agrees, no, it was argues, that the Titans must be awakened in order to heal the Earth that is damaged by the humans. Um, why are you like this? You're bad. Emma awakens Rodan in Mexico, and the Monarch team lures um, it towards Monster Zero. After Rodan is defeated, uh, Godzilla ambushes Monster Zero and severs his left head. During the fight, the U.S. Navy launches a prototype weapon called the Oxygen Destroyer. Like, holy fucking shit, dude. Uh, seemingly killing Godzilla. Totally does. Unaffected, Monster Zero regrows his lost head, brutal scene, and awakens another. all the other dormant titans around the world with Rodan submitting to his rule as the new king of the monster. As a result, Madison disowns Emma. She just goes, okay, bye. And she oh, runs fuck away. Fuck you, mom. I'm she gone. Goes, bye, bye. Going to make the Orca device. Uh, though mythological tech... Through mythological text, Dr. Eileen Chen discovers that Monster Zero is King Ghidorah, a prehistoric alien seeking to terraform the Earth. Hashtag Hollow Earth. Mothra emerges from her cocoon and flies to Monarch's Bermuda base to communicate with Godzilla, who is recuperating in an ancient underwater city. Hashtag Hollow Earth. Via submarine, the team locates Godzilla's lair, which is highly radioactive. They deduce it will take too long for Godzilla to heal on his own and decide to detonate a nuclear warhead to speed up the process. If Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson was in this movie, this is where he this is what he would do. Sirazawa instead, because Aaron Taylor Johnson wasn't here, sacrifices himself, R.I.P. Goat, 
by manually detonating the warhead, reviving Godzilla and increasing his power. Emma realizes the destruction Ghidorah and the other Titans will bring to the world is much worse than anything humans could inflict. No shit, the giant monsters. But Jonah ignores her pleas to stop. Madison overhears this and steals the Orca device. Arriving at Fenway Park, Madison broadcasts a frequency that calms the Titans but unwittingly attracts all of them to her location. Ghidorah lands in Boston to destroy the Orca. Godzilla arrives with Monarch's personnel assistance, uh, personnel's assistance to engage him in battle. Mark leads a team to rescue Madison and escape the city after learning Godzilla's radiation levels are increasing and will lead to a thermonuclear explosion. Mothra arrives to help Godzilla but is intercepted by Rodan. She defeats him but is injured in the process. Ghidorah then overpowers Godzilla and prepares to kill him, but Mothra sacrifices herself and transfers her energy to Godzilla, because that works somehow. Mark, and, <laughs> Mark, Emma, and Madison are finally reunited and reactivate the Orca machine to lure uh, Ghidorah away from Godzilla. Emma sacrifices herself to lead Ghidorah away, giving Mark, Madison, and Monarch team time to escape. Godzilla then enters his newly powered Super Saiyan mode and defeats Godzilla, uh, defeats Rodan, sorry, Rodan and... Oh my god, Ghidorah. Rodan and the other Titans converge on Godzilla and bow to him because he is too strong because he is Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Godzilla. During the end credits, news clippings um, and Monarch fly files shown the Titans are helping heal the planet somehow. A suspected second Mothra egg has been discovered and some of the Titans are converging on Skull Island, King Kong. Ancient, ancient cave paintings... Uh, of Godzilla and Kong are in battle are shown, which is weird because they're ancient cave paintings. And in a post credit scene, Jonah and his forces purchase Ghidorah's severed head in Mexico. Hashtag Mecha Ghidorah. Let's fucking go, man. Okay, so, that so, is so it's the not going to be Mechazilla. It's going to be just Mecha. Oh, it's going to be Mecha both. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to have Mecha Godzilla for sure because King Kong is supposed to kill the first body. At least that's what it's looking like. Mm -hmm. So. All right, oh, Hunter, hit us with your mid-movie notes, because yeah, some of them are pretty funny to see. Because I didn't just do so much talking, right? <laughs> so um, I said Mothra looking clean when Mothra comes out of the egg. Um, uh, I like how the family is working for Monarch. I think that was cool, because we uh, had Brian Cranston uh, work for like a subsidiary of Monarch, but he wasn't in the know. I like how... Um, he worked for a thermonuclear plant or something. But I like how in this movie, they're like, oh no, they're aware of the monsters and they like them. I'm like, what? Yeah. Uh, having Thomas Middleditch in this is hilarious. Don't know why he's here. He's a decent actor. I don't, not saying he shouldn't deserve to be in a movie. Mm -hmm. It's just, why put him in this giant monster movie? <laughs> Fuck um, it. Uh, they are going to use a frequency device to perform terrorist attacks. That's kind of dope though. Terrorism bad. Kaiju good. <laughs> Uh, I said Farmiga is totally going to die. Called it. Yeah. Um, alpha Frequency is obviously Godzilla. Uh, fucking 17. Need to see them all, please. Come on, Monsterverse. Give us 15 movies. Please That's no. Talking about all please no. <laughs> <laughs> Skull Island name drop. Boy. Uh, Muto Heads. Nice callback. Uh, <laughs> this is fun. I said, natural order, what a fucking moron. He's like, yo, let's have kaiju roam the world. That won't be dangerous. And no, no one's going to die. Yeah. Um, only kaiju we know about right now are Godzilla, Muto 1, uh, Muto 2, hashtag fat pussy, uh, <laughs> Kong, Skullcrawler, Mothra, Rodan, and Ghidorah. What are you hiding, Monarch? Did you have to run that one back? Oh, well, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let's run it back, baby. Um... Three fucking dragon heads, dude. Monster Zero, dope. <laughs> How are these researchers not freaking out about a dragon with three heads? <laughs> well, they've probably been working around it too much. Hashtag dead kid ripped the legend Andrew. <laughs> Fuck. I spare That's so no mean. expenses. <laughs> I spare no expenses on shitting on these kids. <laughs> so mean. Uh, there's the scene where Godzilla's introduced. I was like, little man going for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monster Zero, baby, Alpha Titan. How are people not loving all this dumb big monster shit? <laughs> Some people don't turn their brains off. I turn my brain off whenever I do this podcast. <laughs> I can tell. Uh, I, I... Hollow... <laughs> I did Hollow Earth confirmed. Hashtag Lamal. <laughs> Fucking Hollow Earth. I love they said it like four or five times. I absolutely love that. Um, Doctor Lady got fucking chomped on, dude. <laughs> Yeah, she did. Uh, it was weird that she was even in this movie. She has, like, no lines. And then she just gets eaten. I was like, okay. Uh, Godzilla needs more fight time, man. I know they're building up to it, but I want it now. 
Uh, Rodan fin about to die, bro. He doesn't. I was like, yo, Stans is back. Oxygen Destroyer. What the fuck's going on? That's the worst way to die. <laughs> As we discussed. Yeah, it looks like we're getting more movie. It looks like we're getting more monsters. Nice. Uh, <laughs> revised plan. So his plan was to kill the kaiju to restore order, and she stopped it because she wanted the giant monsters to live. Cool, I guess. Government, am I right? <laughs> And this is where Shirazawa dies. I said, no, don't kill the goat. And then all of a sudden, I just went, guess it's over. Kind of abrupt. Because right when Godzilla beats him, it just got, he screams and then it cuts to black. And I was like, okay. Yeah. I guess so. it's done. I guess it's done. <laughs> um, <laughs> man going for swim. Here are my movie notes. Um, Don't you just love when they never learn from the actions of the first movie? Yeah, they're like, yo, more monsters? And I was like, why would you want more? They're like, hey. We have another monster held captive. Let's... We have five. We have 17 of them. Yeah. Let's just continue the trend. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, it's like, who cares? Don't I, um, I think for this one, I said, I don't think we needed um, a human big bad for this. I wouldn't even call him a big bad. He was just kind of around. Um, <laughs> at least he uh, gave them coats. This is when they went to Antarctica. Yeah. I thought that was funny that he gave the little girl and the, the his hostages coats. I was like, that's funny. Good um, so th this is when Millie Bobby Brown was staring at um the dude, and he did like the hand wipe thing of smile, mm -hmm. and she gave him the middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, um, stop licking the dead body, bro. This when he nudges the eyes, like when when he, when he nudged the other head, licking the mm -hmm. dead body. Mm -hmm. Um. Godzilla rising from the ice like, sup, fuckers? Looks like you need my help again. <laughs> you just woke me up from my little nap, bitch. What's up? M Monster Zero with the swift dodge. So when he did the... <laughs> he wrote down swift doge. <laughs> doge? Oh, yeah. Who cares? <laughs> hey, it, it, it did not autocorrect, and it said it was a word. Yeah. Um, Emma kind of a bitch now for putting the world at risk. Facts. Lava pterodactyl. Fuck that. <laughs> Why would you want to, like, imagine living next to a volcano and you're just like, okay, if the volcano explodes, we're probably fucked. That's not good. But as of right now, it's been dormant for a while, so whatever. But then imagine having that volcano house a giant pterodactyl that shoots lava? Pass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so th this is when uh, they were doing, like, the kind of the flight to get to, um, mm -hmm. Ghidorah. Um, and the guy's like, okay, I I'm going to eject out my jet. And... Freaking R Rodan just ate him out of the sky. <laughs> lunch. It's <laughs> like, yo, time for lunch. <laughs> uh, big flying monster fight. This looks good. Oh, that's nice. It can grow its head back. Yeah, when I saw I, that was my exact same reaction. I was like, oh, okay. This is going to be fun. That's the dude from Game of Thrones. He said, long live the king. Oh, shit. That's kind of perfect. <laughs> um, She was the, This is when they bring up Mothra. She was mm. his queen. <laughs> <laughs> and God help anyone who dared disrespect his queen. Fucking dude, Godzilla's a simp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I saw that. I was like, I'm, I have to put that one down. I'm sorry. Godzilla's straight simping. Uh, I'm gonna have that be the thing for the um, re re like for, for my rating. Uh, you, you gotta change it. Well, no, I, I didn't put anything down. I just put out the number. I forgot oh, okay. to do everything. Uh, giant mammoth. This is when they're showing kind of like the news coverage. You see the giant mammoth just walking around. Yeah, I believe that one was called Behemoth. I was like, all right, c cool. Uh, and then um, Godzilla is like, I'm back, bitches. I'm ready to clap some cheeks. And he proceeds to clap cheeks. Uh, r really good action scenes here. I think this is when they were all doing the fight stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Lava Pterodactyl was like, fuck, why'd you stab me, queen? <laughs> Uh, Godzilla, like my queen, no. This is when, um, Mothra died and, like, her ashes mm -hmm. fell on Godzilla. Mm -hmm. that, uh, was the, that was the power uh, transfer thing. Yeah. Uh, cliche sacrifice, kind of when, when Emma left them mm -hmm. and was like, nah, I must do this. She was like, you go, I stay. Uh, this is when, okay, this is the last time I'm doing, like, Godzilla speaking. Uh, last time, uh, Godzilla's like, I'm on fire now, bitch. It starts beating up the, the Geodora. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm on fire. Fuck off. And then, um, th th this is how I wish it didn't end so abruptly, like you mentioned. 
in comes Kong, like, I ain't no bitch. I'm not taking a knee. <laughs> yeah, I wish they teased up a little bit more of the Kong yeah, stuff because, like, this, besides be, talking about Skull Island. Yeah, because like, cause apparently the, the, the island was active during everything, because you could see on maps it was yeah. it, it, it was very active. Well, basically what was happening was uh, that was the feeding the, the feeding grounds, the growing grounds for um, Godzilla, uh, for King Kong. They said that he's supposed to grow over the next 50 years or so. But they took him off of Skull Island, I thought. Not yet. I thought at the end... Oh, no, at the beginning of the movie, it's in the trailer for Godzilla Movie Kong that they're transporting Godzilla. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now on to our review portion of the show before we close it all out. So, on Rotten Tomatoes, this film has an approval rating of only 42%. Fuck you. Based on 347 reviews and an average rating of 5.2 out of 10. But Besides it critical has a consensus higher, reads. But um, it has an 83% from, from, like, from an audience. So if you take there out critics... Yeah. It has an 83 from audience. I think we should also mention that. audience reviews as well. Yeah, we should start doing that. Uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, delivers spectacular kaiju action and reaffirms that cutting-edge effects are still no substitute for a good story. That's true. Yeah. All right, um, I gave it the lower review, so um, Hunter, you got to read that good review. So, so Tim Cogshell from Film Week states... The sound effects in this movie are extraordinary. The roar that Godzilla does, I gotta tell you that I kind of love it. I might make it the dial tone on my phone. Why did you pick that as the good review? I don't know. <laughs> it's not that it was a bad review. It's just, he's like, yo, did you hear Godzilla roar? It made me calm. I gotta make it my fucking ringtone. And then, um, because <laughs> I, I gave it just a little bit lower than you. Just barely, yeah. Um, Esther Zuckerman of Thrillist. Uh, the cast is stacked with otherwise brilliant actors stuck in a borderline incomprehensible plot and forced to play second fiddle to a monster whose powers of wonder wear off fast. That's not true. Esther, suck it. Well, except remember, I, I, me as a person who, who I, I tend to fill out this stuff for the script, mm-hmm. I always find the harshest reviews for us to read. Yeah, I know. It's always good to find the ones that it's like, oh man, it's either so good or it's either so it, it, It's like going back to the King Kong review. The, the guy mentioned like it was like put together with scotch tape. Yeah. Like, fuck. <laughs> Damn. Even the King Kong is the best one so far. Yeah. <laughs> so, time for my review. I gave it seven Hollow Earth theories confirmed by Kaiju existence out of ten. I absolutely love that they were just like... Mm-hmm. Uh, that one doctor guy, I think it was played by... um, What's his name? Bradley something. Uh, oh, notes. Uh, Bradley Whitford. Mm-hmm. He was like, Hollow Earth, man. There's these tunnels under the earth. That's what Godzilla swims through. That's how he's able to disappear so fast. I'm like, why? I, and then they go through the tunnels and like, it's Godzilla's lair. And I'm like, why? <laughs> uh, out of curiosity, since like seeing him, because like I, I when, when I saw his character, I kind of thought of um, Philip Seymour Hoffman's character from Twister, in a way. I had never seen Twister, but I know what you're talking about. He's basically just like a. Uh, like crazy, sus, yeah. Like crazy I, smart person. I, I think if 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 Philip Seymour Hoffman did not pass away, I think he he, he would have fit that role perfectly. I don't think he would have done a stupid giant monster movie. No, he probably would have been would've. cool if he, Matthew he, he Broderick did was able Twister. to do it. Dude, imagine if it was Matthew Broderick. Though. Oh God, no! What if he was reprising his role? No, okay, Hunter, <laughs> I don't know just, he dies in that movie. Just explain your rating. So, uh, my rating isn't really that much of a, a rating uh, explanation, but uh, so I said, how can you not love this film? Kaiju, stupid science, and better human characters. It's got everything the first one had and so much more. Can't wait for Godzilla v. Kong. Big monkey. And as for me, I gave this a 6.5. She was his queen, and God help anyone who dared disrespect his queen. Out of 10. Yep. Um, m- my um, explanation for this is that this was much better than the first one. The human plot felt cliche in parts, totally. but, but natural altogether. The big monster fight was awesome and stupid fun action, which is shit I love. Can't wait to wrap up the series next week with uh, GVK. Godzilla v. Kong. Yeah, I cannot wait for Godzilla v. Kong. It's going to be so cool. I'm Team Godzilla. You're Team Big Monkey. Yeah, Big Monkey. But all deep down together, we're all Team Team Up. They're going to team up and they're going to punch the shit out of three-headed robot I, dragons. I, I wonder what town's getting destroyed this time. Probably, like, New York. Oh. Because we haven't done East Coast. Well, we got Boston in this one. Yeah, you know, you're right, you're right. That's that East Coast. Coast. We, it, mm. it might be East Coast, because that's probably where Godzilla's dormant right now. But... Well, they also have to they also have to transport uh, King Kong to the States. I, so, I cannot wait to... Depending I on where Skull Island is located on the map, they might have to 
fly it to Cali or fly it to like the Florida um, area. Be on note, uh, listeners, I will not hold back from me doing if I, I want Kong to say this. I want Godzilla to say this. <laughs> You're gonna have them have like theoretical conversations, just like fucking going into theoretical physics, going into theoretical sciences, just going. And this is where I would use my punching laser beam cannon, or <laughs> or, or or transporting Kong. Man, I paid for a good C. Where the fuck am I? I just can't wait for uh, your final sup, fuckers. <laughs> it, it, it <laughs> be both of them. He's got one more. <laughs> They're going to see each other and go, sup, motherfucker. <laughs> but uh, guys, thank you all for listening. You can follow us on Instagram at Box Office Losers and on Twitter at Box Office Loser for up-to-date news. I did not really post much on Twitter, nor did we post much on uh, Instagram this week. We just post the update stuff. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to, to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to wherever you're listening to this in the podcast world. Leave a review. It helps us in the algorithm. It does. Because we, we want to get up there. We want, like... We, we somehow want people to hear our opinions, even though there's somewhat <laughs> shit in some regards. Hey, man. We're just being big, stupid idiots on the internet. But also, and we want to share that. But so also, yeah, just share this with your friends. They'll probably get a kick out of it. It's just two dumbasses talking about movies for an hour to... Mm-hmm hour and a half um but uh hunter where can they find you at you can find me at scruffy moose man all over the internet and at hunter van Lierup on pod chaser which i recently found out that i'm on that pod chaser is a podcasting platform that basically tells you your favorite people you follow tells you what podcast they do and what podcast they're on without you actually having to share it via social media so like yeah, so I'm going to put you on there probably, and I'll send you a link to it. Uh, and you can add yourself on whatever guest spots you ever appeared on another podcast. It's really cool. I found out uh, about it like last night and this morning, so I've been fucking with that. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also find me at uh, Android's Amazing Podcast every Wednesday. It's a comic book podcast I do. You can find me every Thursday at Farthest Galaxy, and obviously you can find me here at Box Office Losers. Yeah, man. Where can we find you? Uh, you can find me at Dark Shadow Zeke literally everywhere. When I say everywhere, I mean you can find me everywhere. TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Twitch, fucking Discord, wherever. Uh, you can also find me every Thursday on the Sports Hit List talking about um, AEW uh, for the AEW Injection. Um, but also, as a closing note, we do have to apologize for our audio issues that we've been kind of getting for the past two episodes we're trying to work on them i tried to edit them out as best as i can but uh yeah. yeah i don't know what was going on with my audio i recently got a new laptop and i wasn't able to figure out my voice meter properly but now i just decided to record without the voice meter and i'm just doing my basic microphone stuff so yeah. hopefully it evens itself out if it didn't we'll continue to work on it and yeah. sorry if i'm echoey throughout the entire thing we're trying our best yeah here. i legit so. I, I try to edit this stuff out you, you you guys do not know how hard it is to edit echoes out of a fucking podcast yeah if it doesn't work this time maybe we'll try zencaster which i heard is pretty good yes if not we can also use the voice recording feature on windows itself it's actually oh God. A, it's actually just a standard voice recorder feature all right sounds cool we'll still try but all right guys we'll catch you all next week for the big monster fight a big monkey versus big lizard hell yeah all right guys peace Deuces.